Today I'm here at the 2020 NAM show in Anaheim, California, and I'm actually here at the Yamaha booth. Behind me here is a Yamaha SX5, and actually what's a fun fact is my friend is actually playing on it as I speak. But I would love to thank Yamaha for not only bringing me to the NAM show, as you can see it says Yamaha Buena Park, California on my badge. Not only have they brought me to the NAM show, but they've also basically given me free access to film practically whatever I want. I was just got done filming a Yamaha artist doing a demo on a really cool piano, and I'm also going to be going into their private access room here today at five o'clock not in this video but it will be coming out shortly in the future as after i post this one so hopefully you guys want to stay tuned for that if you're new to my channel you might want to think about subscribing but also another thing i'm happy for yamaha for is giving me this water which is yamaha branded i could definitely use some yamaha water here at nam because i definitely get thirsty so without any further ado let's take a quick walk around and check out what we have here in this massive room it's an absolutely huge room it's filled with marvelous pianists marvelous pianos and all kinds of other really cool instruments as well. So let's go check all that stuff out. This here is a Yamaha C3, which has the trans acoustic system installed in it. You can get the C3 with a different, a bunch of different options. You can get it as acoustic, disco vera inspire, or the silent piano. But this one here, according to the label, is a trans acoustic. That means it has devices in there that actually will, I believe what this one can do, can actually uses the soundboard as a speaker system. They vibrate the soundboard to create um, music. So you can layer other sounds with this instrument as well. So you can not only play it as the acoustic piano, but you can layer in a second piano. You can layer in orchestra, electric, pianos, all kinds of cool stuff. There's actually a little uh, bu series of buttons down here. And while I'm not going to really mess around with that today, perhaps if I get a little bit of quiet time, I will actually play with that. Here's the inside of a Yamaha C3 piano that's been outfitted with the trans acoustic system, which allows you to layer other instruments with the acoustic piano sound. It's a very pretty look, and they kind of have a pinkish color harp, which is rather reminiscent to me of Bosendorfer. This piano is brand new, and it looks absolutely beautiful. This is a C3, in case I didn't mention that already. I do like these pianos quite a lot. They are nice. Today, this instrument here is a Yamaha GC1 that's been outfitted with the silent system. We've got a guy here playing some music on it, and it sounds really, really good. The GC1, I believe, is a lower-end Yamaha piano, but from what I can tell, standing right here, which is a pretty good place to be standing, it has a really nice sound, especially in the treble right there. Hopefully, you guys can hear that. That sounds really nice. I like the sound of that. And of course, we've got a good pianist on the instrument too, so that always helps. So that's a GC1. Like I said, it's been outfitted with the silent system, so if you want to, you can flip a switch and the piano can play silently, but the action feel the same, which is ideal for practicing in a small apartment or a small house. It's got a good sound to it. This here is the Yamaha SX5 I started off this video at. I absolutely love the Yamaha SX series. They're absolutely beautiful pianos. That is a nice bright sparkly treble. And as you can hear, hopefully here, the piano is actually being played. The person who's playing it right here is actually my very good friend, Alan Knight, who is a heck of a pianist. I've actually taken lessons from him before, and he is a fantastic pianist. Really great teacher, really awesome guy. So again, this is the Yamaha SX. X5 and it is a really really fantastic piano. I actually haven't gotten the chance to play this yet but Yamahas are so consistent and I've had such a good uh, track record with the SX series before that I can basically guarantee you that this piano is marvelous. Just like the pianos playing it. Sounds really beautiful. The treble on it has an absolutely very very bright powerful feel. If you had this in a um, like a small concert hall it would have no issues at all filling the the room with sound. This piano that I'm standing next to is a Yamaha GB1, but what's more important than the actual piano itself is the technology that is within it. This piano has the Discovery and Spire system, which is easily the best player technology that is available on the market. It's so much more than player technology too, but that's just what I'm going to refer to it as in this video here. There are a couple of other, co uh, other companies that make player systems. You've got Piano Disc, you've got Spirio, and there's a couple of others as well um, that makes things like that, but Yamaha is definitely the best. This is their seventh generation technology here with the Disc Inspire. Other companies are on their first generation. So Yamaha has been at this since the 80s and the technology is seriously impressive. There's a little uh, iPad here that is connected uh, through Bluetooth to the piano. One kind of cool thing here that's kind of neat um, is the smart key system. And I've actually met the inventor of this, which is really amazing. So basically smart key is kind of like if you remember those keyboards that have the lights in them and you can, you can play the key that has the light and it'll show you how to play a song. Smart key is kind of like that. It's a little bit more showy than that. If I activate it here, what will happen is you'll see that there's a key wiggling here. So this wiggling key is indicating, hey, you should play this key. So if I play this one, then the next one will play and wiggle, and then this one will wiggle, and then this one will wiggle, and then 
the piano will do its own thing and then it will continue to do that. So while I wouldn't exactly teach you how to play the song, it would be really fun if you have family over at the house and they're like, oh, you have a piano, can I hear you play? You could say to them, no, I want to hear you play and show them this, tell them how it works and literally anyone could do that. That's really fun. Another cool thing is that this, of course, has the record functionality. Not all of the other uh, player systems on the market have the record functionality. This one here takes a little bit of time to get started, but if I ha it says here, touch piano keys or pedals to start recording. Now, what's really cool about the Disclavier system is it actually has a massive amount of sensitivity. So, for example, I don't have the piano mic'd up here. It's a lot going on right now. But if I play normally, I can play the piano normally. I can play it extremely quietly. So that was extremely quietly. The piano was making sound there. I can play it loudly. Really test the bass end of this little piano. And I can also even play the keys without making them make any sound. As you can see, they're moving there without sound. Also, I can move the pedals. And then if I play this back for you, you'll see that it can do all of that absolutely flawlessly here. Let's see, it's saving. And then I can hit play. And what you should see is it will play normally. It should. There you go. A little bit of input lag there. But it's got, it'll play normally. Then in a little bit, it will actually play quietly. The pedal is actually moving by itself. There it is, playing quietly. So it's a really, really impressive amount of control that this system has. Other systems, such as some of the ones that are on their first generation, do not have this amount of control. There's the loud bass notes. And then in a minute here, we'll actually play the keys without making them move. That's really, really impressive that it has that amount of control to not only sense that I'm doing that, but also to actually move the keys that much as well. So the Disclavier Inspire is really, really impressive technology. You can also have it play other pieces of music as well through the system, modern pop music, classical, really any sort of music you want to, which is another thing that not all the systems have. Now, I've been invited here by Yamaha, and one of the cool things that they allow me to do is literally say anything I want to about the instrument. If I wanted to, I could come here and find someone I didn't like and say something mean about it. But to be honest with you, I absolutely love Yamaha. They are make, they make some really impressive products. The Disclavier Inspire is a really amazing system, and this is all all my honest opinions. I absolutely love the Disclavier, and it's such cool technology. I love technology. I'm one of those guys that just geeks out about technology and thinks it's awesome. So this really pushes all the right buttons for me, and I absolutely love it. In this area of Yamaha's booth at NAM, at the NAM show, they have Avant Grands. These here are known as hybrid pianos, and basically what they are are digital pianos with the action of an acoustic piano. The action is a little bit modified. Instead of having felt hammers, they have weights on the end of them, but they have the action, the mechanical components of a actual acoustic piano. This here is the Avant Grand N3X, and so it is actually shaped like a grand piano. It's got speakers all in here, so when you sit down and play it, it will have a rather similar sound um, when you're sitting here to an acoustic piano. I have done a few videos of these in, um, in Ohio, I think it was. I found the whole lineup at a single store, and I just did a whole video on these. I think I've also done a couple of videos of individual models of these as well. So this here is the Avant Grand N3X. I like that the little shelf here is made of metal. It's a very nice touch. And then down here we have another Avant Grand model. This one here is the N1X, and this here is basically the same idea. It has a grand piano action inside of it, but it has an upright piano form factor, so it has a really nice feel to the action. It's actually on at the moment. It has a very, cl very close feel. Not exactly the same, but a pretty close approximation to a real acoustic piano, but it has the small form factor and the ability to use it silently with headphones. And also there's a little drawer here, at least on some models, this one doesn't have it, but on some models there's a drawer you can pull out that has other sounds. This one here actually has other sounds up here in the menu. So I think there are Let's see, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 15 different sounds you can choose from here on the Avant Grand N1X. And then down here at the end, there's also another one too. This one here is the NU1X. I believe the difference between the NU1X and the N1 is that this uses a upright piano action as opposed to a grand piano action. You can see that the N1 is a little bit wider than the NU1X. In fact, I'll bet the U actually stands for upright. So that's what this one is, but it's the same basic idea, but it uses a upright piano action instead of a grand action. So that's just a little quick look at the avant grands. Yamaha basically brings everything to the NAMM show, which is really cool. So here we have three Yamaha uprights, of course, at the Yamaha booth here at NAMM 2020. This one here is a Yamaha P22, and the way it's been explained to me is that the Yamaha U1 is a very, very popular upright, and many people like it. This one here, from what I've been described it as, 
it's kind of like the U1's little brother. It's a little bit cheaper, a little bit more affordable, but still a very good piano. I was playing it a little bit, and the treble seems to be very, very impressive. Perhaps later I'll come back and do an actual review of this, or if I find it in a store, even better, because the environment will be a bit more normal, I will be able to review it there. But what's special about this is Yamaha's newly introduced for 2020, the silent piano system into the P22. Basically, there's a little control panel down here that allows you to activate the silent system, and with that, you can actually completely play the piano silently, the actual feel the same, and you can run headphones into it to get a digital feed into your headphones, which is a really nice idea for a small apartment or if you want to practice at midnight and not wake the baby. Let's move on to the next piano over here and check that out. Today I am here at the 2020 NAMM show with none other than Craig Knudsen. Now, today, Craig is a really awesome guy who, of course, works for Yamaha, and today we're here with a really cool piano. This is the Yamaha U1 Trans Acoustic. Yep. Craig, can you tell me a little bit about this piano and what makes it special compared to a regular U1? Yes. Well, the U1 is a very popular piano worldwide, of course. However, this has some technology added to it. Trans Acoustic means there are transducers. In fact, if you look carefully, you can sort of see them under here transducers that will take sound, whether it's the digital piano sound or even sounds from my MP3 player, and play them through the soundboard of the actual piano, which is weird. You know, I mean, if you think about a speaker, a speaker is a transducer going to a cone, and that cone makes the waves. This is a transducer on the soundboard of the piano. So this is an acoustic piano here. If I push down the center pedal, we don't hear that acoustic piano anymore because the hammers are no longer hitting the strings. Now let's turn up the digital piano sound. That's a high resolution, high definition recording of a nine foot concert grand that never goes out of tune, right? But that sound is coming through the sound board of the piano. That's the part that's crazy. Yeah, yeah. And what you should try later is doing both at the same time. Let me push that pedal up so we've got a digital sound. Now let's add the acoustic back in. It's a U1 basically with a digitally enhanced acoustic panel. Last but not least, let me show you this. This okay. is pretty cool. I can just take my music from my MP3 player. And so let me find just some a song here. And when you hear this play, keep in mind, there are no speakers in this piano. So I've got a little Alan Parsons there. There are no speakers in this piano. My MP3s are playing through the soundboard of the piano. It's just so crazy. So, so does that give it, because it's coming through a wooden soundboard, does that give it a warmer characteristic than if you use speakers? It's a really good point. Obviously, the dynamic range is not exactly the same as a regular speaker, um, but when you play, well to answer your question quickly, the answer is yes, uh -huh. so it's going to sound a little bit different, but if you play the digital piano sounds through there, at least those digital sounds are coming through real wood on a right, piano, right. so and the purists tend to like it's it. It's resonating inside of a real piano, so that'll yeah. give it a more realistic effect, and I assume if you're playing the digital sample, if you play the, <laughs> if you push the damper pedal down, does that lift the dampers on the piano? Yes, it does. So then you'll have the natural resonance of the actual piano mixing with the digital With the signal. digital sounds, so yeah. That will really improve Yeah, it. that's, what. so if you take, get rid of the, uh, let me switch sounds, let's go to a, uh, electric piano. There we go. There's no way we would hear it, but if I play this sound and then hold down the damper and get rid of this, you can hear the strings resonating. It's very subtle, very hard to hear on the NAM floor. So I'm playing the digital sound, getting rid of the digital sound, but you can hear the strings resonate from that digital sound. So. Anyway. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much for this sure, awesome absolutely. demo. It's a, such a fantastic instrument. I found one of these a couple of years ago, and I was blown away by how good it sounded, especially that it has no speakers in it. That was no amazing. Speakers. And of course, the U1 is a fantastic nice piano, again. too, as well. So thank you yeah. very much for the demo. Absolutely. Hope you guys really enjoyed this video.
This piano I'm standing here next to is another one that I've also demoed, and I think the one I demoed was at the same store that I demoed the Transacoustic Upright at. But what's new for this one is this actually has disc clavier technology in it. I'm not positive that the disc clavier in the uprights is new for 2020, but I actually have not seen it before. So this is a YUS5, but it has the disc clavier system in it, so that means the model name is now technically DYUS5. And this has the same disc clavier inspired technology I already demoed on the other piano that was over there. So I'm not going to demo it for you again here, but this is a really tall upright. I really liked the one I found before at the store, so this one here I'm sure is excellent as well. So this has the disc clavier technology as well. So if you don't have the space in your home for a grand piano and you want to have all the cool technology of the disc clavier, you can have an upright do the very same thing, which is pretty cool. The piano here behind me is, in fact, a Bosendorfer, as you may be able to see by the name on the fallboard and the side, but it is not any Bosendorfer. This one here is extra special because it actually has lots of gold leaf on it, which is something amazing that I didn't even know people really did too much in 2020, is put gold leaf on pianos. But, in fact, Bosendorfer has, and that's why it's on this special protected pedestal. Apparently, the gold leaf hasn't had the final protective coating put on it, so if somebody touches it, it could get tarnished. And, of course, who wouldn't want to touch gold leaf? it would, in fact, be very tempting to do that. So that's why it's up here on the stage. I'm not the only one who's not allowed to play it. No one here that I know of is going to be able to play the piano. So unfortunately, I won't be able to demo this, but it is a Bosendorfer. It's an absolutely beautiful looking piano, and I'm sure it sounds as beautiful as it looks. So it looks to me that the, um, the logo on the, for the music desk here is um, has gold leaf on it, and it looks really cool. Don't really know what it says, but it looks like it's probably Latin. Perhaps some of you guys know what it says, and you can translate that for me. And if we go around to the back of the piano, you can see the entire harp and the underside of the lid has gold leaf. Let's go check that out. So here is a look at the inside of the piano, and it's absolutely beautiful. I promise I won't touch it, but it's absolutely beautiful. We've got gold leaf all under the entire underside of the lid, and it's so, so beautiful. Maybe I'll show some close-ups of it here or something. I'm not sure, but it's absolutely beautiful. And the entire harp is also has gold leaf on it as well, which is really amazing. It looks incredible. A normal piano with traditional gold paint looks really good, but this looks so, so cool, and it's absolutely amazing. It's 23 karat gold. I know that because there's a little poster there talking about what it is. 23 karat gold leaf over the entire harp of the piano, the entire underside of the lid. So, so beautiful. And the inside rim is actually kind of like this nice green color, which is really cool. Contrasts really well. It's like a minty green. Contrasts really well with the gold um, leaf, and it looks really, really cool. Very special Bosendorfer. Hey everybody, this instrument here is a Clavinova CVP-809GP. I actually wouldn't have remembered that but it, unless it was for the nice handy little card here. So this is one of Yamaha's new Clavinova instruments, at least I believe it is new. These lights are really bright. Um, it has a lot of really amazing features. I was watching a demo of it up on stage earlier and it has a lot of cool features, a lot of cool sounds, including a really amazing pipe organ sound, which sounded really great on their big speakers. But anyway, this is a really cool instrument. It's surprisingly affordable. I asked somebody here at the Yamaha booth what it costs and it was way less than what I personally was expecting for as good as it sounds and for as many features as it has. This is a cool instrument that you can find here at the NAMM show. Basically everything Yamaha makes, they bring to the booth. Another thing that Yamaha brought to the NAM is a series of Clavinova instruments. This one here is a CLP 685. You know, I really haven't done a lot of reviews of Clavinova instruments, um, but I really think I should start doing those because they're actually very, very impressive. Um, I mean, one feature I like alone already on this instrument is the very wide music desk. It even has these nice little clips to help keep your music in place. Very, very nice attention to detail. These instruments have a very nice action, a very nice sound as well, especially for a type of digital piano. They're pretty impressive, especially the higher-end models here. This one here, the action of it kind of reminds me a little bit of the, uh, the CP88. It kind of has that s rather similar feel. Not quite as heavy as the CP88, but it definitely has that same sort of feel to it as well. With well, the action, you push the key and then it doesn't really want to go, and then all of a sudden it will swing down there for you. That's kind of the feel I'm getting out of this instrument here. So it seems to be off. It's running through headphones. Another great thing about digital pianos is, of course, you can use them with headphones. But they brought an assortment of CLP Clavinova instruments here. There's a few more over here that I can go check out. This instrument here is a Yamaha CLP675, which has a few subtle differences over the instrument I was just looking at. One of them is the action. It has a different action in it than the C685, which I think is the one I was just looking at. And I think I like this one a little bit more. It feels a little bit more responsive, a little bit less, uh, it's a little more springy, uh, but it's a little bit less clicky feeling than the other one. Uh, this one here, I think I actually do prefer the feeling of it to the 685. Both of them are really nice. 
but I think the action on this one feels a little bit better in my personal opinion. Another cool thing here that's kind of neat is that Yamaha actually manufactures the stands here for the um, for the the iPads as well, which is kind of cool. So it's got Yamaha branding, and I assume that they actually manufactured it themselves. So not only do they bring their own instruments, but they also bring their own iPad stands. There's another Clavinova right over here. This one here is the 645. This one says it has the natural wood NWX keyboard action. So let's see. I guess this is a completely different action. So, ooh. This one here, again, has a bit of a different feel. It's not as springy as the 675. It's a little bit lighter. Um, feeling and it actually has wooden keys in there as well. That one probably did as well. I can't really see from here, but I'm sure it did. This one here has a bit of a lighter feel to it, but this one here is also pretty nice. Here is yet another uh, Yamaha Clavanova. This is the CLP 635. It yet again uses a different action. This one here uses the Graded Hammer 3X, or the GH3X. And let me see what I think of this one. This one definitely has a, it's actually a bit springier, oddly enough, than the instrument I was just looking at just around the corner. A Little bit springier, does have kind of a bit of a light feel to it, and um, but it's surprisingly springy. It is graded, so it has a bit of a heavier feel down here in the bass, and a bit of a lighter feel up here in the treble. Very subtle, possibly not even as much as you would even find on a real acoustic piano. But real acoustic pianos, in fact, do have that kind of a graded feel because the bass hammers are much bigger than the treble hammers, so you'll have a slightly bit of a different feel in the action, and that is what this is attempting to emulate. You got a bit of a springier feel down here and a bit of a lighter, more fluid feel up here. So that's a very nice attention to detail. Behind me over here, we have a different series of instruments. This one here is actually very similar to one I reviewed at Milan Recording Studios. This is the P121. I reviewed the P125, and I found this to be very acceptable for a first-time instrument. This one here has the stand, which I didn't opt to get on mine, but this here is basically the exact same thing that I reviewed on the uh, channel a few weeks ago. It has a very light action, but it is quite responsive, and it has a pretty decent feel for be a beginning piano student or an early progressing piano student. It will do basically anything you want it to do, but it's not going to be great for super advanced classical music. Anything else, it really works perfect for. So this instrument here may look familiar to you if you've seen my review of the P125, because in fact, that's exactly what this is. Now again, getting a good audio quality here at NAMM is virtually next to impossible, so if you really want to hear what this instrument sounds like, you can go watch my full in-depth review. I test all the different sounds on it and then give you my opinion on the piano. I've already kind of done that here in this video as well, but you can get a more in-depth view of that on my channel. Again, this is the P125. You can also see here the built-in uh, stand that you can optionally get for it, so it'll come with a nice little legs on the side, and I think a triple pedal unit as well, which is a major upgrade over the square plastic pedal that it comes with, which works, but is a little bit not great. However, it's easy to find replacement pedals and op other options, and so that is, of course, a bonus. But that three pedal unit definitely is great. Yamaha not only brings their super high-class instruments and extremely high-quality pianos to the NAMM show, but they also bring some more budget-friendly options as well. I've seen these online for sale, and I believe they're like under $100. They're extremely, extremely affordable. They have um, unweighted keys, and they're basically for a very beginner pianist. But we have an assortment of keyboards in this style here as well at the NAMM show for people to take a look at. It, this would be maybe a good idea for schools if they wanted to have like you know educational instruments for young students or something like that. This is the reason that they have these, because NAM is also all about education, not only about products, but another theme that you'll find here at the NAM show is education. There's also more slightly higher end instruments over here. This one here actually seems to have, actually not actually weighted, um, but it does have more piano-esque shaped keys. But so these here are just an arrangement of much more budget-friendly instruments compared to the Clavinovas and the other P-series instruments we've been looking at, although some of those can be quite affordable as well. These ones here are very affordable. So that's those are here at the NAM show too, so they literally have everything at the NAMM show. So this instrument here that I'm holding is actually one of Yamaha's many sonogenic keytars that they make. It's kind of a bit of like a guitarist for a pianist because you've got a keyboard here that you can play, but you've also got buttons up here that you can modulate, kind of like you would have a guitar neck. Instead, you have a series of buttons. This one controls the pitch. This one controls the vibrato. This one controls the sustain. So it's like a damper pedal except it's a button. So you hold it down. You can't hear this, unfortunately, but you hold it down and then it will sustain until I let it go, which is kind of cool. You can have different sounds, piano, guitar, synth, and others. I've got it on a synth sound right now. Which is kind of fun. So these are just kind of more like a fun, casual type of instrument, but you, could, you could definitely use them on stage. I have seen a number of... Typically, you find these used in like electronic music. Um, 
Who was it? I think it was Haywire uses these sometimes in his videos and he does really cool stuff with them. I'm definitely not um, good enough to be able to really use this as serious music instrument, but you definitely could do some cool stuff with these. And this one here comes in a cool white. There's like red and blue and all kinds of other neat colors. But so this is kind of a bit of a piano for a guitarist. The keys are kind of small. I find it a bit difficult to play the right notes, but I'm sure it's just a learning curve. And as you get used to it, you could definitely get a feel for how it goes. So that's the sonogenic guitar. So here's two really adorable instruments that I didn't even know Yamaha made. I don't know if you can hear the organ music in the background, by the way, but it sounds awesome. Um, these are two little, extremely tiny, lightweight keyboards, and they're kind of designed for a multitude of different things. Uh, you can see this picture here shows a baby's hand, so they would be excellent for a very young child. This one up here also shows a little kid. But also you have somebody over here who's a bit more of my age, so you could also use them, I guess, as a very portable way of creating music. I'm wondering what sort of ports. They have nothing, really, as far as the back. They've got a head phone output and the power cable, which appears to be micro USB, um, possibly USB type C, but probably micro. Um, so that's kind of interesting that they make these little tiny battery powered keyboards. Uh, also, you can plug them in as well. I'm sure they've got a battery. Yeah, they got a battery spot there too. So these are just really cute little tiny keyboards that I didn't even know they made. They've got another one over here. I'm not sure what the difference is between them because the action is really all the same. Um, you can choose different sounds. It says you can choose different sounds. I want to get an organ sound, but it doesn't really seem to do that, but cute little keyboards. Many years ago, when I was about 9 or 10, I actually owned a keyboard very much like this. This one here is the new updated version for 2020, but the one I had was the current version at the time. This is the G DGX660, and I had a lot of fun with mine. While it wouldn't be up to the level of some of these amazing clavinovas that you're finding here, the action actually has a pretty decent feel, and it's kind of a bit like the P125, except this one has a lot more features. This one has a lot more sounds. It has, I believe, larger speakers than you would find in the P125. This one has 554 different sounds from everything from wacky sounds to goofy sounds fun sounds serious sounds like pianos and classical instruments as well as sound effects too I'm sure at least the one I had yeah percussion and synth pads and other sound effects so lots of cool stuff lots of fun things on this keyboard and I had an absolute blast with it when I owned it I've actually since given mine away because I've grown out of it but this would be a really good instrument for somebody who is a beginning piano student or perhaps a younger child very fun instrument I had a lot of fun with mine so this here is the new Yamaha YC. As you can see here, it's basically designed to be sort of an organ-based instrument. So you've got actual drawbars here that will update live on screen, and you can change and move them on the fly. They've got these really nice lights in them. These ones are pink. I guess you can custom change the color, because on some of the other ones, like that one over there, they're white. But they have this really nice clicky feel, and it does absolutely cool stuff. These ones have are plugged into headphones, so I really can't show you what these sound like here at the NAMM show, but they do sound awesome, and I have played with them a lot. They have a waterfall-style keyboard, kind of like you would find on a vintage Hammond B3. They're designed to be to have that same kind of springy, non-weighted feel. And in fact, they do they do have a pretty similar feel to what you might find in a vintage Hammond. So this is basically designed to be kind of a clone wheel type of organ, but in a very small form factor. So really good for being on the road or not taking up very much space. You could stack it on another instrument very, very easily. Very cool instrument. And I'm hoping I'll be able to get my hands on one somehow uh, in a few months or so to be able to actually give it a nice review. As you can see, the aesthetic of it is very reminiscent of the CP88 that I've already reviewed and many of you may be familiar with, but this one here is designed to be more focused on organs. So this instrument here is a Yamaha Electone, and to be completely honest, I know virtually nothing about it. Uh, I've never even seen one like this before in a store before, but it does obviously appear to be a type of organ. We've got two manuals as well as I guess these would sort of be like your draw bars. They've got numbers to them ranging from 16 to 1, so I assume these little switches here are kind of like your draw bars. It is not in fact on at the moment. Um, but this is a vintage Yamaha Electron. It does actually have presets, I'm assuming is what these are for, kind of like you would have on a uh, Hammond organ at the time. So yeah, preset one, preset two. I don't know exactly how those work because they don't stick down like you have on a Hammond organ. So maybe there's lights somewhere that indicate what preset you have. But there's also an expression pedal down here on the floor. It has a very light feel, so you could really make some quick movements with that. So this is a vintage Yamaha Electone they have here. Sadly, it doesn't appear to be on. Uh, maybe you have to put, I bet you have to put those headphones on to hear it, but it doesn't, like, the lights aren't on or anything, so I have no idea, but it does have a portamento, which might be kind of fun to measure. Anyway, this is just a quick little look at a cool piece of vintage equipment Yamaha has, and then of course over here we have another YC. 
So while I don't know a lot about brass instruments, I do absolutely adore them. I love the way they look and I love the way they sound. And these instruments are French horns and euphoniums over here. Now, I don't really know a whole lot about them, so forgive me, but they're so beautiful. I just thought I'd show them off to you in this video. Yamaha makes all kinds of stuff and I'm sure these are very, very high quality. They're absolutely gorgeous and I love the way they look. If we come down over here, you can see these here are euphoniums. They remind me of miniature tubas. I'm sure all the brass people are absolutely yelling at me for that, but that's just what they look like to me. Um, I'm sure they have a completely different purpose though, and they look really, really beautiful. It's kind of neat how the tuning slides are actually a different color than the rest of the instrument, and the the pistons and the valves are a different color as well. Not sure what that's for, but I do like the two-tone color. Over here we have more instruments I know very little about. These here are, of course, classical flutes. Um, again, I know very little about them, but I do think they are beautiful, and they look so very nice and shiny. Over here we have instruments that I sort of know a little bit about. These are called pianicas. So these are kind of like a Yamaha's take on what a melodica should be. So I'm not going to use them because you have to put your mouth on them. I don't really want to do that here at the show. But basically they're kind of like a little tiny reed organ you power with your mouth. So apparently, according to Yamaha, these are a different type of instrument compared to a well, actually, no, they don't say melodica. They say harmonica and accordions. So it says, creates a sound similar to the harmonica and the accordion. Also would be a bit similar to the melodica and to a reed organ. They all work on the same basic principles. So you blow into one end and it creates music, and then you can use these little tiny keys, which have a very clicky type of feel to them, to be able to make music. So it's a really kind of a cool idea, and I think it sounds kind of neat. So again, I'm here with more instruments that I know very little about, but I do love the saxophone. It's one of my favorite instruments to listen to. In another life, I think I would definitely play the saxophone because it looks like a lot of fun. And these are absolutely beautiful instruments. My favorite one over here though, of course, is the, I assume this is a baritone sax, the really big deep one. These have an amazing, amazing sound. These ones here are alto saxophones. All of these here are alto saxophones. I only know that because of the um, the name, the, la the label, the little sticker here. Um, they're the YAS62. One one one. So, saxophones here at Nam Show. I think they're cool. So these, of course, are some trombones that Yamaha has, which are another instrument that I absolutely love listening to. They look beautiful, and I think they sound really cool. These are the Custom Z. Let's see, it says, a fusion of traditional craftsmanship and modern innovation designed with jazz legends Andy Martin and Wycliffe Gordon. So these are definitely some serious instruments here, and the one this guy's playing sounds awesome. So at the Yamaha booth, another thing that they make are trumpets, and these ones here are really cool. I'm really intrigued by the one with the extra long bell or horn. This one apparently is called the Fanfare Trumpet, the Sovereign Sound. Redesigned valve casing offers a performer better projection and an easier, more natural playing feel. If any of you guys are brass players out there, let me know why it's so tall compared to your traditional trumpet. Is it for extra volume? Because it does say it's for fanfare, so maybe it's extra loud, extra big sounding. Maybe it's got a different range as an octave lower or something. Again, I don't know a whole lot about trumpets, but I do enjoy them. And since I'm here at the NAMM show at Yamaha's booth, I figured I'd show them to you guys. So I'm going to be carrying my supplies here and walking through the guitar section here. As you can see, we have some acoustic guitars here. These are the FG Red Label guitars, and they are very pretty indeed. Yamaha, of course, makes acoustic guitars. I actually have an older Yamaha guitar in my collection. don't really play it much, but I do, in fact, have a Yamaha. This one says that these are inspired by the iconic Yamaha Red Label guitars of the 60s. Unfortunately, mine is not that old. I think it is a bit um, newer than that. But these are apparently inspired by guitars from the 60s. I do know that the 60s were an excellent excellent time for Fender guitars and apparently for Yamaha too. There's also more guitars down here. We can check these out. Some of these ones here have a very, very small body to them. Not exactly sure what the story is behind that. Perhaps they're for travel or just perhaps for giving a different sound. I do see that they have a little, um, you know, acoustic electric, a little pod in there so that you can use it and connect it up to um, an amplifier. So they've got some little um, buttons here on the side that you can connect, use as a tuner, and I'm assuming that somewhere here, yeah, on the side here, there is a, um, an output jack. So these are acoustic electric guitars. I think this whole category here is acoustic electric, and there are still more guitars to take a look at. Over here, I think these are all the FG series. Again, not super knowledgeable on Yamaha guitars, but I'm here, so why not cover them? This is the FGX830C. Mm. 
That's a pretty good sound to me, but again, it is the NAM show. Now, these ones over here look like they're a little bit special. This one says, Meet Storia, a guitar as unique as you are. Storia transforms the traditional acoustic guitar into one-of-a-kind statement piece. So I'm not exactly sure what makes these special over other Yamaha guitars, but I'm sure that there are some special features in there. Um, to me, they look pretty ordinary, but again, I'm not a guitarist. I don't know too much about them. These here are Yamaha's CG series, and of course, these are, as you can tell, classical guitars with nylon strings. Classical guitars are a really, really cool variant of guitars. They have a really neat sound, fascinating playing style, and I enjoy listening to classical guitar music from time to time. These here are Yamaha's offering into that genre. This here is Yamaha's L series of guitars. I'm assuming these are perhaps the more budget-friendly options. Something about them says that to me, but they still look very, very pretty, and they have a very nice appearance. If we head on down this way here, you can see someone is actually trying out one of this series. This is the CSF series. Kind of reminds me of the CF line of pianos that Yamaha has. It says CF CSF series guitars are compact instruments that combine rich sound with superb playability, making them perfect for playing both in and outdoors. So these, again, I'm probably going to assume that these are perhaps a bit more budget-friendly options, but as you can see, they do look very pretty, and they look really cool. <laughs> Sounds pretty nice to me. It seems like it has a lot of projection. This is a really noisy environment, but I can hear it perfectly fine, so I think they've got a bit of projection in them. So here is a small little booth here at Yamaha has for the NX series of guitars. We've got somebody tying one out there. These, it says, combining a contemporary design with meticulous attention to detail. So I feel like these here are a bit of a higher end guitar than some of the other ones I was looking at earlier, perhaps. And they do look really, really nice. They have a nice molded body that looks like it would be very comfortable to sit on the lap. This lady's really going at it. I wish I could hear it a little bit better, but she seems to be a very good guitar player. Wish I could hear that better. Here are a few more of the NTX series of guitars. These are the NTX. We've also got the NX series as well. And so these here are just another look at the same sort of thing. So these here are a couple of really cool instruments at the Yamaha booth. These are actually silent basses. Now the double bass is easily one of my favorite string instruments. I love their deep, rich sound of them. And these ones here are actually silent, so you can practice them silently or run them through an amp. This, I assume, would open you up to a whole new world of being able to run this instrument through effects, through pedals, through all kinds of other things, recording a direct. You could do a whole bunch of other things with an instrument like this that you wouldn't be able to do with a, a regular acoustic bass. Although, of course, a regular acoustic bass definitely would have a different sound. I'm actually going to try this out a little bit because I don't think it would be all that bad to try it out here. I'm, of course, not a bass player, but I do really enjoy. Perhaps someday I will take some time to do some bass lessons. This, this, this thing sounds awesome. I don't know if you guys can hear it, but... I really like the sound of that low bass, and it sounds really cool to me. It's really hard to get the intonation, but because there is a lot that I cannot hear, but... It has a lot of sustain there as well. I think there definitely would be a lot of advantages to an instrument like this as opposed to an acoustic bass because the acoustic basses that I've tried sometimes can suffer from having projection and sustain. They won't have it very good. There are, of course, mic setups you can use for a regular acoustic bass, but I definitely think that in the right circumstance there would be a huge advantage to using an instrument like this. I also love the shape of it too. This little wood bit here is really, really fantastic. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I do. Right now I'm in a private air-conditioned room here where Yamaha stores some of their guitars and I have to say, even though I'm not a guitarist, this is such a nice relief to get away from the incredibly loud noises here at NAMM. This is an absolute haven for me. I am loving it in here. We have some really nice guitars in here. We've got the transacoustic line once again that we had out in the main room as well. I prefer looking at them in this room though because it's so much quieter. Ah, oh, so good. Anyways, we've got the Grand Concert Series here of guitars. This is the LLTA. Really, really lovely looking acoustic guitars and all of these have trans acoustic technology inside of them it appears that there are four different series of the um, trans acoustic system there's the studio response technology the atmosphere the trans acoustic and also a different type of the atmosphere for the a series the nx series the trans acoustic series and the fg red label series all of this is coming from a sign that's behind the camera so if i got any of that wrong 
I'm sorry for that. But so this here is a little private room. Again, I love it. It's air conditioned. It's cool. It's wonderful. And it's also got really cool musical instruments. So I hope you guys enjoy that. And also it's got a speaker system in here too. So if you wanted to, you could plug in a guitar and hear how it sounds through the speakers. So here we are out in the main room again, and here is a closer look at Yamaha's silent bass. You can hear the awesome organ music in the background. That's coming from their new Yamaha YC uh, stage uh, keyboard. I'm really hoping I can get my hands on one of those because it sounds awesome. Anyway, here is a closer look at the silent bass. I really love the aesthetic of this instrument. It looks really, really cool. And of course, as almost everything Yamaha makes, it is most likely very high quality. There is a volume and a EQ adjuster on the side, as well as a power switch and a blending um, switch here for the P, it says PU and mic, and then you can press it for a different type of micing setup. So that is that, and I absolutely love the look of this instrument. If I played upright bass, I think I would go crazy for it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this look here of the silent bass at the NAMM show. There's so much more to go check out, so let's go do that. Yamaha also makes bass guitars, so here we have the TRBX line of basses. These ones here are five strings, these ones here are traditional four strings, and they look really, really cool. I like the wood finish that we've got on these five strings here. It looks absolutely cool, and I really, really enjoy it. Let's see how they feel. They have, ooh, they have a really nice heft to them as well. These definitely look awesome. If I played bass, I would definitely love to rock one of these up on stage. It is beautiful. I love the wood color on that. And it's also got some nice details on the back of the neck there, too. I really love the way that looks. That is awesome. We've also got some more traditional types of basses down here. And we also have some more over here as well. This one here is a little bit reminiscent of a Fender style of bass. They call this one the Broad Bass. It comes in this really cool blue. I'm sure you can get it in other colors as well, but it looks really nice in the blue. Again, it's another five string. We've also got some more four strings and five strings. They're kind of mixed in over here, but these are really cool looking. So here we are looking at some really special guitars here from Yamaha's custom shop in Los Angeles, at least that's what the sign here says. So we've got some really, really cool looking guitars. The pink one here is neat. It's got kind of a weathered look to it, and that is really neat. And also it looks like it has a solid rosewood neck and uh, headstock, which is really awesome. Rosewood is really cool. I like the one with the star on it. That's really awesome as well. And then we have some really cool ones over here from Jeff Schroeder, Billy Sheehan, and Butch, Walk Butch Walker. I really like the red one in the middle, or is it red or orange? People like to fight over whether something's red or orange on the internet, so I'm gonna say it's orange, but it's a bright neon color, and I love neon, so I think that one's cool, but honestly, they all look really cool. Also, the bass is really neat, too. So here we have Yamaha's silent line of guitars. These are guitars shaped like an acoustic guitar, but they're actually designed to be silent, which is a really, really cool feature. Now they have headphones plugged in, but they don't seem to be working for me, but I am really curious as to what these actually feel like. Of course, they are extremely, extremely light. Um, and I love the, whoa, I love the hollow aesthetic here going on, like where it's just completely, you know, nothing there, but they have a really nice feel to them and they're of course very light as well. This one here actually has nylon strings, so I guess these ones here are designed to be actually, yeah, these ones here are designed to be more for like classical guitars, and then there's others down the line that have steel strings, so they're designed to be more like a traditional acoustic guitar. I didn't actually know they made an, a classical guitar variant of the silent system, uh, but that is really cool as well. Again, it doesn't seem like the headphone thing is working at the moment. The battery inside probably is dead or simply isn't there. But there is also a traditional quarter inch output jack as well. So again, you could use this and run it through all sorts of other effects and do really neat stuff with it. So this here is the classical version of these. There's also the steel string version as well. I'd be kind of curious to know what a 12 string version of these would be like. I don't know if that exists, but I would like to see that as well. Let's put this back where it belongs and let's move on to another thing here at Yamaha's booth. So here we have some electric guitars made by Yamaha. From the description they have here, it seems like they are kind of designed to be an all and everything type of guitar, designed to be able to do nice clean tones and also do the heavy, hard metal type of music. I like this one here myself. This one here kind of has a nice pink wood tone to it. Very, very neat. I guess I like wood colored guitars, or not colored, but you know, guitars with kind of a natural wood um, grain to them. I think it looks really nice. This is the Pacifica series, Yamaha Guitar Development. I think it looks pretty neat. Don't know a whole lot about them as a whole, but I do think they look nice. 
These here are more Pacifica style guitars, and these ones, of course, are clearly inspired by a Fender Stratocaster. They've got the white pick guard with the colored body, and they definitely are reminiscent. I think they're basically otherwise the same as the one I just got done picking up. This one here has a whammy bar, the other one I had didn't, but this one I believe is basically the same thing as the one that I was just done holding. Again, these ones here look really nice as well, and they have a various um, range of colors to try out. So here we have some orchestral chimes at the NAM 2020 show from, of course, Yamaha. These are absolutely fantastic instruments, and they look to be extremely high quality, particularly this one over here. The build quality of the frame is absolutely phenomenal. Got these massive wheels, this massive pedal that you can use to dampen and undampen the chimes, and it's just all really, really fantastic. They have some mallets here that I can use to try out. These ones here, I guess, are synthetic plastic mallets here. So if we can try these out, these are very wide mallets as well. These, I think, would probably be the inch and a half diameter chimes. Let's try the low C. Lovely. Beautiful. I love that. I, of course, have a vintage set of Deegan chimes, but they have a bit of a smaller diameter, and I really do hear the difference here between mine and these large ones here. These have, I think, a bit of a better projection and a very, very pure sound. That is absolutely lovely, and I also enjoy the feel of this damper pedal as well. You can lock it closed as well with this button here, so then you can simply use your hand to mute the, um, the chimes. That low C, though, is absolutely fantastic and sounds really, really amazing. I love the sound of these. There's also a couple of other variants of the chimes as well. This one here says convenience for a smaller pit percussion performances, such as a worship services setting or community theater. This new stand allows the player to transport only what is needed. So the idea behind this is you're able to take only the chimes you're going to need because you might not need the entire two two and a half octaves of the chimes. You might only need one chime at a time for the only song you'll be playing chimes for. So that's the idea behind this. Instead of lugging the massive array of chimes, you can only bring this and only bring what you need. This mallet has a really nice long handle too, I like that. So instead of having all of these, you can simply have this. And this seems to be an octave lower than the A over here too. That sounds awesome compared to the A over here. That would be an octave higher than this A here. So these here are an extended range for the chimes as well, and then you also have a couple of notes that would be in the er normal series as well. Very pure tone from these chimes. That's the one thing I'm really noticing. They have a really pure sound. We also have a set of smaller diameter chimes over here. These ones look like they might be smaller than the Deegan chimes I have, but perhaps they are the same. Let's see how these ones sound. This sounds a lot more like my Deegan chimes at home. It almost has the exact same sound. A lot of the sound difference I'm hearing too also could be from the mallet I'm using. This one here is synthetic. The one I have at home is a rawhide mallet. That also could be producing some of the sound difference. But you really can hear a difference though between the smaller diameter and the larger diameter tubes. Compared to... These ones just have a bit of a more full-bodied sound, and well you, well, you probably wouldn't really need chimes of this size for a recording studio. Chimes of this would be perfect for an orchestral setting where you really need more punch to be able to carry over the rest of the entire orchestra. Both of these seem like extremely high-quality chimes, and I adore them both. I absolutely love these. These are fantastic. Now, I did hear rumors somewhere that Yamaha had acquired the company Deegan. Um, I'm not, like, these are not branded as Deegan. They appear to be branded Yamaha, so I'm not 100% sure what happened with that or if that's even true but I do believe that Yamaha purchased Deegan um, the company Deegan so if that is true perhaps they use some inspiration from those to create these because these sound just like the chimes I have at home here is a Paduke a xylophone here at the NAMM show. This one here is the YX230. This one here is made of Paduke, which is a, a kind of alternative to um, rosewood. Rosewood is typically found in some xylophones and many marimbas, but Paduke is a bit of a more durable, different sounding alternative, and you commonly will see it in xylophones. Hopefully you guys can hear me because there's some cool drumming going on in the background here, but I could give you a d quick demo of this. These are some nice hard rubbery mallets, so this should have some pretty good projection.
really glassy, really bright sound from this xylophone has a lot of projection, and I really enjoy the sound. It's fun to listen to. Wow, that goes really high, and even at the highest note, it's still very, very loud. Very, really cool. This one, this instrument I'm here with is a vibraphone. Now I have a Musser M75 vibraphone, which is a lot different from this one. The bars on mine are much wider, the frame is bigger, and it may have a wider range, or perhaps it's because the bars are wider, it appears to have a bigger range. But this one here still has a really wonderful sound, and I'm surprised at how much volume you can get out of these very small bars. It's the same range as my M75. It is, let's see, three, four octaves, and it has a really nice sound. These mallets seem to be harder mallets, so they sound a little bit better up in this range, but I'm sure the lower end also sounds good when you use the right mallets. It has a really nice, pure sound, and I'm honestly surprised at how good it sounds because these bars are so small compared to what I have on the M75. These really sound awesome. Really cool instrument, and I absolutely enjoy playing on it. Hope you guys liked it. Yamaha makes a bit of a few instruments for marching bands, and these here are marching style toms. So that is what these here are designed for. You've also got the whole array over here that you would carry on your body, at least you can in some instances. That is in fact what this stand here is for. This is designed for marching toms and other types of drums. And so we have a few different styles here of snare drums. They have mutes on them by Vic Firth, presumably because these instruments are extremely loud, and if you took these off, you'd really just annoy everybody. So I will leave the mutes on, but you can kind of get an idea of how they are supposed to feel and feel like when you're playing. So that's kind of cool, and there's also some sticks laying around so you can pick up various different um, things and try out instruments. We've got a bass drum over here. I don't think there's a bass mallet anywhere, so I can't really play that one for you. Um, but we do have a series of marching drums here, too. These ones are of different pitches, and depending on the tones, you can almost practically play melodies on them. But since they have the mutes on them, you really can't hear what the pitches are. But I'm not really trained in marching percussion, but they are really cool, and I do hope you guys enjoyed this little look here of some marching percussion. Also, somebody's having some fun with the xylophone, which I really enjoy that instrument. Here we have some concert-style percussion drums and toms from Yamaha. These ones have an absolutely amazing sound, and this time there are some sticks here, so I am actually able to play them. These ones here have a bit of a thinner head, and I don't think you're supposed to hit them with these, so I'll avoid playing these, but I will play these drums here. And I think this one here probably should be played with a different mallet as well, so I won't hit it with these ones. Um, we do have these as well, which are a slightly different style of mallet, but I think with bass drums, typically you have a much larger, poofier mallet. So to avoid any sort of damage that might possibly happen. I won't play the big bass drum, but I will play these four here um, because they sound absolutely amazing. Anything with a good bass to it, whether it's a piano or a drum set or just really anything at all, I love the sound of it and these sound phenomenal.
I'm having way too much fun here. These are amazing. I love, I love, I love the sound of these so much. Oh, that is amazing. That is so, so cool. I really hope the sound quality is coming through on these through my microphone because these are so much to play. I'm going to have to come here later and play these again because I am in love with that sound. I think I found something else that I might need to get someday for the recording studio because that sounds incredible. I love those so much.